How's it going, everybody? This is RBT coming at you with College Football Week 6 Prediction Slash Pick Video. And this video is going to be done really quick, guys, so it'll probably be my quickest video yet. I have to go to my game in about 30 minutes, and um, when I get back tonight, which will be late, I won't have time to record this and I have to study for a midterm tomorrow, so I have to hurry up and get this done. So I'll probably have hardly any analysis in this, and God, guys, Jake Locker just got hard off the field, so I don't know how to feel about that. Hopefully, he'll be back by the end of the season, because that sucks, because we're, we we're doing really good, but hopefully Ryan Fitzpatrick can step in and and play play well. But anyways, let's get into the games. Like I said, they'll be quick. Texas at Iowa State. I'll go Texas. I think Iowa State's just not enough for them. I mean, it'll be tough playing at Iowa State on a Thursday night. It'll be, it'll be interesting, but Texas will win. Um, 34 to 27. They'll keep it close, but Texas will win. Western Kentucky at ULM, which is Louisiana Monroe. I don't know what happened to Louisiana Monroe this year, but Western Kentucky surprised me. Um, beat Navy last week. I go Western Kentucky. 28 to 24 over Louisiana Monroe. UCLA at Utah. I, this I think will be a tough game. I think Utah will really, um, really play this game tough. They can score some points. Travis Wilson's a good quarterback. Big 6-7 QB, I think, will put up some points in UCLA's defense. But UCLA, Brett Hundley, will uh, will pull it out. They'll win in a high-scoring game. I'll go 38-34 to over Utah. Moving on to Friday games. BYU at Utah State. This was a squeaker last year, a defensive game, and it will be a defensive game once again, I believe. Uh, maybe a few more points, but I think Utah State can pull this one out. I think Chucky Keaton and that offense is ready to uh, get a big win this season. They played a couple teams really close. They played Utah. They played uh, USC extremely close. So I think this is the game they pull out a big victory, and they win 17 to 14 over BYU, an exact opposite of what they how they lost to USC. Okay. Um, I had something in my mouth. Uh, Nevada at San Diego State. San Diego State is just their worst year. I, then I can remember Nevada will win easy. Hopefully, maybe Cody Fajardo will be back. I have no clue if he's back or not, but he's a great quarterback. They always have a really good running attack there, so I think they should win pretty easily. I'll go 42 to 21 Nevada over San Diego State. Moving on to Saturday, Navy Air Force at Navy. I don't think Navy will have any problem. Um, they're playing well, playing good defense. They did get beat by Western Kentucky, but they still play good defense and plenty of academy school. I think they'll be able to run the football and play well. But I will have Navy winning this game, uh, 24 to 17 in the close one. Louisville at Temple, of course, no problem. Louisville, that offense, Temple's horrible. Lost to Idaho, that completely shocked me. But Louisville, big, 45 to 14 over Temple. Oh guys, uh, this is gonna be an awesome game. Maryland at number eight, Florida State, and Maryland looks mighty good, guys. And Florida State's defense looks very suspect. Um, James Winston, though, they look good. Their offense looks good. But on the other hand, Maryland's defense looks good. Their offense looks good. Number tw They're finally ranked at number 25 in the country coming off a of bye week. I think Maryland can get it done. I think in an early game, early kickoff, it'll be a fun matchup. I think Maryland can get the win. I'm going to go Maryland in an upset, which is probably my upset pick of the week. Maryland 34, Florida State 31 in a very close game. And I'm... Extremely confident that Maryland can win this game. If Boston College can put up 34 points against Florida State, Maryland can have a chance. Texas Tech of Kansas, no problem here. Texas Tech and Cliff Kingsbury has kind of been struggling offense more than the, what they wanted to, but uh, they're getting there. They're still ranked. Defense is playing at a high level. They should beat Kansas, no problem. Uh, 34 to 20 over Kansas. Penn State at Indiana. I think Penn State will be able to pull this one out. It'll be a high scoring game. Indiana can put up some points. But I see in this a game, seeing this being a game where Penn State find a way to win, and uh, Christian Hackenberg I think has a big game. The freshman quarterback I say Penn State, 42 to 35 over Indiana. Illinois at Nebraska, a pretty interesting Big Ten matchup, a matchup of two one-loss teams, and Illinois is looking better, folks. They're they're not where they were in the Ron Zook days, but they are looking, I think, a lot better offensively and defensively. Their offense really wasn't a problem last season, but defensively, man, they're looking pretty, pretty good. Their only loss came against Washington, I think, and they actually battled a good Washington team pretty tough. But I will go Nebraska. They'll keep 
Illinois will keep it closer than most people think, but I'll go Nebraska 37, Illinois 30. Ball State at Virginia. This will be a defensive game, uh, but I think Virginia will pull out the victory. Ball State with their good quarterback, Keith Winning, will keep it close with Virginia. 24 to 10 over Ball State. Eastern Michigan at Buffalo. Only reason I'm picking Buffalo is because Buffalo absolutely obliterated Connecticut last week, who's a BCS level team. So I'll go Buffalo big because Eastern Michigan's horrible anyway. But I'll go Buffalo 42, Eastern Michigan 17. Michigan State at Iowa. Two offenses that are your prototypical Big Ten offenses with two pretty good defenses. Playing at Iowa will be a tough environment for Michigan State, but I think Michigan State's defense. We'll create some turnovers. We'll get to good field position to win the game. Uh, it'll be close. It'll be one of those Big Ten slugfests, <laughs> um, defensive struggle. So I'll go to Michigan State, 14 to 10 over Iowa. Rutgers at SMU. SMU will put up some points, but Rutgers will pull out the victory. Um, Rutgers looking mighty good ever since that Fresno State loss week one of the season. So I'll go Rutgers. High scoring game. Rutgers, 42. SMU 37. Georgia State at Alabama. Oh my god. I'm going to this game and Alabama could win this game by a thousand. Georgia State's the worst team maybe ever as an FES level team. They're horrible. Ever heard of a. <laughs> I, <laughs> I get so many. I get comments on my videos talking about how people love it when I talk about uh, Georgia State. Because I think every video I mention Georgia State, I talk about how bad they are. But they are. I mean. Team that that last year as an FCS member was one in ten, and their losses weren't just close losses. They lost by thirty plus points in about every single game against FCS teams as an FCS member last year. Now they're playing pretty good schools at top competition as a a transitional member into the Sun Belt Conference. No, Alabama could it could score a hundred in this game, and I'll go Alabama fifty five, Georgia State. Three. Somehow they'll get three points. I don't know how, but I just I don't like picking shutouts. It's hard. Uh, North Carolina at Virginia Tech. North Carolina's defense gave up a ton of points last week. The East Carolina was blown out. Virginia Tech struggled with East Carolina as well, but um they pulled out the victory in overtime. But uh, I think I think their defense can hold North Carolina to to uh, enough points to pull out the victory. Playing at Lane Stadium is always a tough game for everybody. <laughs> um. I think the difference in the game is Purdue Tech's defense. They limit North Carolina. It's really defense to hold because North Carolina, you know, North Carolina's defense will give up some points to Virginia Tech. I really like Virginia Tech. They, they've improved every single week. Logan Thomas had a big game last week against a good Georgia Tech team. I'll go Virginia Tech. Uh, 31 to 20. 31-20 over North Carolina. Army at BC, which is Boston College, will be a close game. This game is always close. But Boston College, a team that really played well last week against the Florida State team, which is top 10 in the country. But I think Boston College will put up some points, enough points, that is, to beat Army. I uh, 27 to 17, Boston College over Army. Central Michigan at Miami, Ohio, two not so great teams. I'll just go Central Michigan. Miami, Ohio was absolutely obliterated last week. And I'd give Central Michigan the win 14, I mean, 24 uh, 21. South Alabama at Troy, my South Alabama Jaguars, which was, they played, I'm so proud to be a student at that school, I mean, the team's been around for four, four or five years, this is their first year as a complete FBS member with bowl eligibility, and they are seven yards away with a minute left, tying the game with Tennessee, and we were so close, but that would have been one of the biggest upsets in a long, long time, and I'm so proud of my team for for getting so close and playing so well. And I think we have a legitimate shot at winning the Sun Belt this season. That will be awesome. My first year of eligibility to win the Sun Belt, we probably really easily could do. I think we can come out fired, real confident. I think we can beat Troy, who was beat, pretty ba pretty down, beat down pretty bad last week. I'll go South Alabama 38, Troy 30. I mean, Troy's a tough team, but I think we'll come out and, and uh, repay him for last season and get the first one in this rivalry because this is our, really our biggest rival. This is the this is the rivalry game for South Alabama. UTSA at Marshall. Two decent non-BCS automatic qualifying teams, but I think the difference is quarterback play in this game and home field advantage. Playing at home, Marshall, Rakeem Cato put up some points. I'll go Marshall 42, Texas Antonio 30. 
Ohio Akron also another uh, difference here is the quarterback play Tyler Tettleton. Tyler Tettleton in that offense will score some points get Akron against Akron. Ohio 35, Akron 20. Florida Atlantic at UAB. Um, Florida Atlantic has not been doing well this year. UAB's, uh, you know, let me check something real quick. This is home field advantage for UAB as of right now. And, uh, UAB has a win. And I believe that, um, Florida Atlantic does not, or I could be wrong. Because I really honestly hope you guys forgive me. Don't know too much about these teams. They both have wins. Who has a better win? Florida Atlantic has a win over South Florida. Oh, they, and Florida Atlantic has some close wins. Close losses against Rice and Mid Tennessee, who's about some points. Um, hey, I'll go Florida Atlantic. What the heck? They beat a, an F, a BCS level team in South Florida who is honestly a one of the worst teams in football right now. Automatic qualifier and not an automatic qualifier. So, but I'll go for Atlantic. Close, 28 to 24 UAB. Western Michigan at Toledo. Toledo, the quarterback, put up some points. They'll win, um, 38 to 21 over Western Michigan. Clemson at Syracuse. I think Clemson could keep this playing in the carrier dome, keep it close for maybe a quarter or two. But Clemson will pull away. They'll win by 21, uh, 42 to 21 over Syracuse. Uh, Georgia at Tennessee. Uh, based on the perform two performances last week with these two teams, it'll be no, no, no problem for Georgia in this game. Tennessee's defense is not great, pretty slow, and Justin Woolley is not a good quarterback. He, he's he's bad. He's very bad. And Georgia will put up some points and win easily. I'll go Georgia 45, Tennessee 20. Georgia Tech at Miami. I think Miami keeps it rolling. Georgia Tech's still a good team, but they played a really good defense in Virginia Tech last week and they're kind of stalled and they, they kept it close, but they did not get the win. Miami's rolling. Good good quarterback play, good offensive play. Duke Johnson, one of the best running backs in the country. Stephen Morris did leave the game last week with an injury and it'll be big to see if he plays this week, but I think he should be back. It wasn't really a major injury, so I think Miami should pull out the victory playing at home in front of 20 fans. I'll go Miami. Um, Miami 38, Georgia Tech 28 in this one. Okay. Uh, Minnesota at Michigan. Michigan's been playing all these these uh, lower tier teams close, uh, very close. And I don't know why. I don't know why that is the reason. I mean, why was the reason behind that? But I'm gonna as long as they keep doing that, I'll, I'll keep it going. I'll say uh, Minnesota keeps it. Closer than people think. Not as close as the other games. But I'll, I'll go Michigan uh, 31 to 20 over Minnesota. Kansas State at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State coming off a very surprising loss against West Virginia. But that was a tough environment to play in. The West Virginia fans get rowdy. Uh, I think it was a huge quarterback um, change with Clint Trickett. And he completely changed the attitude of the team. The defense played well too. and gave it 21 points to Oklahoma State. But I think they should have no problem with Kansas State to come back and roll at home in Stillwater. They should put up a ton of points. Justin Smith, the running back, and whoever plays the quarterback in this game, they'll they'll put up points. They have good wide receivers on the outside. They, they'll score a ton. I'll go to Oklahoma State 45, Kansas State 28. Don't get me wrong. Kansas State can score some points, too, but I'm not really selling their defense whatsoever. Okay, North Carolina State at Wake Forest. North Carolina State should win this game. They're not a bad team. Only one loss so far in the season, and that was to Clemson, where they played really tough. Wake Forest, just just down, just really down. Their offense, defense, everybody. Uh, the really lack of depth and lack of star recruiting is really showing right now. Gene Grobe's trying to force an offense on uh, Taylor Price that he's not comfortable running when he's really a pocket passer, trying to make him run the read option and stuff, not working out. North Carolina State will win. 28-14 14 over Wake Forest, Massachusetts, Bowling Green. Bowling Green should win this game, no problem. Uh, 35 to 17 over Massachusetts. Rice at Tulsa. I think there will be a lot of points scored in this game, but I think I'll pick Rice here. I'll go Rice. Because uh, Rice, hey, they're putting up tons of points against really good opponents. Uh, they played well against Texas A&M, about beat Houston, so they're, they're putting up some points. But I think they, they'll lose. I mean, they'll win against Tulsa. Tulsa, this is probably the worst Tulsa team in a, a Long time, so I'll go Rice, um, 42, 42 to 24 over Tulsa. 
here's a matchup of the MAC championship last season, Northern Illinois at Kent State. And this is the game that got Northern Illinois into a BCS game and knocked Kent State out. That would have been crazy to have Kent State make a bowl game, a BCS bowl last year. That would have been awesome, really. Uh, so I think Kent State, they're wanting revenge. They're wanting revenge for Northern Illinois taking away all that, all the possibilities. But uh, they have two good running backs in Travion Durham and Dre, uh, Tra Travion Durham and Dre Archer. But the quarterback play has been bad. They really uh, strived last year off the turnovers that they created. They were always plus in turnovers, but not the case this season. Defense not playing well. I think Northern Illinois and Jordan Lynch will put up a ton of points, a ton. Um, Jordan Lynch will run like crazy, probably run for over 100 yards, maybe even more than that. But I'll go Northern Illinois 45, Kent State 27. East Carolina at Milton, NC State. Watch out, this game could be a close one. Two offenses that are high powered. East Carolina should get the window. Played well against a couple of BCS teams. That's why I'm picking them. And I'll go East Carolina 38 to 31 over Middleton SC. North Texas at Tulane. Uh, Tulane has a good quarterback in Nick Montana, so a son of Joe Montana, but I'm giving North Texas the wings. I was really impressed watching them against Georgia. They kept it close against Georgia for the most part. Uh, pretty good running backs. So a decent defense, too. But I go to North Texas, 34, Tulane, 24. Washington State at Cal. Battle of two of the uh, programs in the Pac-12 that are really not there yet, but they are improving, I believe. Uh, both teams coming off huge, devast not de devastating, but two huge losses last week against uh, Washington State with Stanford and Cal against Oregon. They both lost by 30-plus points. I forget the final score of the Cal game, but I think Washington State can, can come in here, get the win. I think it'll be a little bit more low scoring than some people think. Uh, but I think Mike Leach, and I think their defense is a lot, a lot better than some people think. Washington State, that is, um, only allowed seven points to USC that one game, I think, or was it ten points, something like that. And Cal has a good offense too, so they'll really uh, balance things out. But I think Washington State will find a way to win at Connor, Connor Holiday. He has some ability, but he needs to learn to limit the turnovers. But they'll find a way to win. Out of Washington, twenty-seven, Cal, twenty-four. Florida International at Southern Miss. Southern Miss in the country's longest losing streak, and uh, I can't defend myself anymore as when I would say that Southern Miss wasn't a bad team. They're not horrible. They just find ways to lose. They're not as bad as their record and their losing streak shows. I can't defend that anymore because they've been playing absolutely horrible. So I, just based on that reason, until they get the win, I have to go Florida International. That actually has a pretty decent offense. So go FIU. 34, Southern Miss 21. And FIU also is uh, does not have a win on the season. Wow. Wow, FIU. What is wrong with FIU? Wow, guys. Oh, my God. They are horrible. FIU's four games, 43-10. and 10. 43 to 10 against Maryland. Understandable there against Central Florida, 38 to nothing. Get this, but they lost to Bethune Cookman at home, 34 to 13. Bethune Cookman, and then they lose to Louisville, 72 to nothing. Wow, wow, guys, that is bad. That is very, very bad. Oh man, Southern Miss might. This is probably Southern Miss's best opportunity to get a win this se this this season. Uh, do I want to pull the trigger and say Southern Miss gets their first win and snaps the country's longest losing streak? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I, I did not know Florida International was that bad. I'll say Southern Miss finds a way to win. First win in whoever, however many games it is. I'll go Southern Miss 20-17. to 17. Hey, got to start somewhere. Central Florida at Memphis. No problem for Central Florida. They'll get the W. Uh, Blake Bortles put up some points. They looked great last week against, against South Carolina. Almost put out the win. I picked Sa Central, Central Florida over South Carolina last week. If you watch my video, you've not known that. I was so close to getting that right. And they were so close to shocking the country. But South Carolina came back, and they ran the ball pretty well. But I go Central Florida. I was really impressed with Blake Bortles. And this should have no problem. 41-2-20 uh, against over Memphis. 
Fresno State at Idaho. Fresno State, dear God, with a thousand points. Fresno State 55, Idaho 14. Uh, Oregon at Colorado, same situation here. Oregon should put up a million points. Um, I go Oregon, oh God, Oregon 56, Colorado 20. Liberty at Old Dominion, Old Dominion, Tyler Henneke will keep putting up a ton of points. Like these other teams, they put up 60 last week, I think, against the team they played. Uh, so I go Old Dominion in that offense, 52 to 28 against Liberty. And now we got a pretty good game here. LSU at Mississippi State. LSU coming off the bad, not bad, but devastating loss against Georgia. Really put them in a bind. Put put them in a bind going into the national championship race. Uh, even though nothing's impossible right now, I think Mississippi State's a good team. Um, and LSU coming off an emotional, emotional game, and uh, it's just a, it really just uh, I think killed their their spirits. And we, we know what I'm where I'm going with this. And having to play at Mississippi State at night, it could be, it could be a trap game for LSU. They could be overlooking Mississippi State. Who they play? They play Florida the next week, so they could be overlooking Mississippi State, coming off the emotional loss and uh, playing in uh, in front of all the, the thousands and thousands of cowbells. So it'll be close, very close. But LSU will find a way to win, 24 to 21 over Mississippi State. Watch out, watch out. LSU needs to put on. Upset alert, but they'll find a little win. TCU at Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma's looking really good. TCU hasn't really been looking that bad. Uh, lately, they've looked better from their since their two losses against Texas Tech and LSU. But Oklahoma's looking really good, beating Notre Dame last week by a big margin. And I even said that in my prediction video. I had no uh, confidence in the world Notre Dame winning in that game. But Blake Bell's looking mighty good. The defense is looking pretty good as well. I think they'll get a win at home. Pretty easily. I'll go Oklahoma 38, TCU 21. Okay, Arkansas at Florida. I honestly do not know what the Florida, final score of the Florida Kentucky game was. I know they won 21 7 at one point. 24 to 7. Wow. Did not put up as many points as I thought they were going to. But we all know Florida's defense is great. But like I said before, playing against, with their defense and their horrible offense, even though I think Kyle Murphy gives them a, a, a little bit better. Of an offense, he looked. I was kind of impressed with him, uh, but hey, we don't know. It was Kentucky, so we'll have to see him judging. It's a pretty good, pretty good team in Arkansas. Um, man, this is a tough game to pick. But like I, I've said this before, as long as you don't have a good offense, no matter who you play, they're going to stay in the game. And uh, I mean, twenty-four to seven is not really a bad, a bad score for Kentucky. Because I mean, if, if you don't score, I mean, your opponent will be right in the game, and more than likely they'll either get a turnover. Or defense to play to score to stay in the game. But with that said, Arkansas has a really, really good running back. If you don't know about him, his name is Alex Collins, freshman running back. He's one of the top five rushers in the SEC right now. Might even be top. I'm not sure. But he's great. Uh, um, Brandon Allen looks pretty good at quarterback. I think, I think that's his name. Um, wow, Jets just scored. That sucks. Uh, and I think Arkansas will keep it close. They'll keep it extremely close and could get the pull the trigger and beat Florida. But for some reason, I think the defense will come up with a big play, a defensive, uh, a turnover, uh, a special teams play, and they'll win somehow because that's what Florida does. Playing at home at the Swamp, it'll be a tough environment. I'll go Florida extremely close, 24 to 21 over Arkansas. Okay, guys, I gotta hurry this up. Might fly through these last couple picks. Ole Miss at Auburn. I think Ole Miss comes out, plays good, but I think Auburn gets the W. Ole Miss, I don't know what happened to Ole Miss's offense. They're better than that. And they'll, they'll put up some points. They will, but playing at Jordan-Hare Stadium, I think Auburn comes off off a of bye week, off the emotional loss against LSU. They want to to prove people wrong. They'll get the win over Ole Miss. Uh, high scoring game, 35-32. to 32. Cincinnati at South Florida. This will be a blowout. South Florida, one of the worst teams in the country. Cincinnati will come out, score some points. Brendan K, quarterback, filling in for Munchie Legault, who's out for the season with a torn ACL or something in this knee. That was a horrible injury, but Cincinnati big, 45 to 10 over South Florida. Ooh, a rivalry game here. One of the best rivalries in college football in New Mexico State at New Mexico. New Mexico State, 28 to 21. Texas State, Texas State at Louisiana Lafayette, two Sun Belt schools here, and uh, Louisiana Lafayette has been the favorite to win the conference. They've uh, 
did not look as good and competitive as I thought they were gonna. Um, they, uh, they didn't, I thought they would keep it close with Arkansas. They didn't really lost by 20. I thought they had a chance to beat Kansas State, lost by 21. And they, sorry, played, uh, Nickel State blew them out, which everybody does. And they, they beat an uh, Akron team, which isn't good, by five points. So, I think Texas State will keep it close. Texas State can score some points, and they don't they don't have necessarily a bad defense there at Texas State. They, they play some pretty low-scoring games. But I think T Terrence Bradway, the quarterback leading Lafayette, will uh, find a way to win this game. Playing at home, I'll, I'll go Louisiana Lafayette. 31-24 to 24 over Texas State. Kentucky at South Carolina. Kentucky, I, I'm not feeling it. I think South Carolina playing at home. They'll come out kind of slow. Uh, I mean, without your starting your your main starting quarterback, I know Dylan Thompson splits time, but it, it'll be tough for the transition in this this SEC schedule with Connor Shaw out. Um, they did get out a, a squeaker last week, but I think he'll they'll be fine because they, I mean they have a pretty easy schedule for the next month or so: Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, and Mississippi State, which could be tough. I mean, all those games will be I mean SEC will be competitive, but I think Kentucky will keep it up. Not a blowout, kind of like the Florida game, but I'll go South Carolina 31, Kentucky 17. All right. Uh, Arizona State versus Notre Dame. I'm not sold on Notre Dame's defense being able to stop an offense and spread offense like Arizona State. Taylor Kelly's a heck of a quarterback to come off a big win against USC, who supposedly supposedly had a good defense, but I'm going to go Arizona State and Taylor Kelly. Uh, also really impressed with Marion Grice, a running back. So I think they should have no problem. And they should beat Notre Dame, I think, by 10 points. Go to Arizona State, 30. Notre Dame, 20. Missouri at Vanderbilt. Missouri's... Okay, here's a fun fact. There's two teams left in the SEC that's undefeated. That's Alabama and Missouri. They, they have not played a, a conference game yet, and they start off with Vanderbilt. Um, but like I said, it's interesting when teams go undefeated. Even if it's against easy teams, they gain momentum. And if they can get easy or easier conference games early and get wins, they just gain momentum. And, hey, that can lead to a good season. I mean, a team, it, it's not all about talent. It's about playing together, having momentum, believing. And if you're undefeated, you I think you have to be believing. So I think Missouri can keep it close. Can they pull the victory off and beat Vanderbilt? Uh, Vanderbilt's not a bad school whatsoever. They can score some points. They can play defense at times. I'm, I think Austin Carter Samuels is a playmaker to, to an extent. But uh, man, I think I think Missouri finds a way to win. You know, rolls on to five and zero, and I think they win twenty seven to twenty four over Vandy. Good. If you haven't heard of Doriel, Doriel Green Beckham when you're SC, a fan of the SEC school, watch out because like, I'll be making some plays when he plays you. It might not beat you, but he'll make some plays. Louisiana Tech at UTEP. UTEP thirty four. Louisiana Tech twenty four. The game of the week. Ohio State out Northwestern, and this is where game day is, and it sucks. I don't be able to watch this. I really wanted to watch a tough night game at Northwestern. That that's awesome. Watching a, a night game at Northwestern. I mean, this is this is potentially national implication game right here. I mean, if Northwestern can win this game, this shows that they're for real. And if they get past Ohio State, that shows they can beat anybody in the Big Ten. I mean, if Northwestern was undefeated, guys. Everybody else has a loss. There's a national championship dark horse right there. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed with Northwestern. Two really good explosive players in offense. I believe one of the best one-two punches in the country with Kane Coulter, the quarterback, and Venerate Mark, the running back. Some pretty good players on the outside. The defense is playing a little bit better. But can they pull the win? I mean, Ohio State's coming. This is probably Ohio State's toughest two-game stretch in, in for the season. And then so they're coming off a big win. They're going to be beat up. Oh, uh, Northwestern's coming off a loss. I believe I picked Wisconsin to win this to win last week, so I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that. Um, Northwestern has a win over Cal, Cal, Syracuse, Western Michigan, and Maine. <sighs> Is Kane Coulter going to be? Is Kane Coulter going to be healthy? I think so. Can they do it, guys? Can they do it? Not too many impressive wins. For Northwestern, they're ranked 16th in the country. It'll be a night game. It'll be a crazy environment. Even though they tend to not have crazy environments at home, they're, they're no the sleep sleeper game because their their stadium's never packed and it's just a quiet environment and and 
fans, there's not too many fans show up, but they, they can play well in that environment. So it'll be different from Northwestern playing against a, a packed stadium. Game day is going to be there. All this hype around them. And I hope to God they win. That would be awesome for Northwestern to win. That would be awesome. But I, I don't know. I just can't do it. They're not too many impressive wins. I think Ohio State will slip up, and I hope they do because I'm not a fan of Urban Meyer. But uh, I think Ohio State, can I do it? Can I do it? Um, My brain's telling me. My brain is telling me Ohio State. My heart's telling me Northwestern. Um, I'll do it. Ohio State coming off the reason being, I don't think Ohio State will be able to contain Vendrick, Mark, and Kane Coulter. I think they'll be able to get to Braxton Miller. I think coming off an emotional win, a tough game, a down to the wire game with Northwestern coming off a of five, they'll be rested. Ohio State beat up. It'll go down to the wire, but I, I don't know why, but I have some feeling Northwestern will pull it out. Play, this is one of the first games in who knows how long I'll be in the, the primetime night game, the feature game of the night. So I'm going to go Northwestern. Northwestern 34 to 31 of Ohio State. Brains telling me Ohio State. Northwestern's in my heart. Going with my heart here. West Virginia at Baylor. At these games quick. I gotta leave soon, guys. West Virginia and Baylor. Baylor. I'm extremely impressed with Baylor. I think the the Big 12 is gonna be come down to two schools, and that's Baylor and Oklahoma. And I believe this game is actually pretty close. Well, not really. It's about four weeks away. And, hey, I think Baylor, they, they could be undefeated going into that Oklahoma game. They play Kansas State, should be a win. Um, Iowa State should be a win. And Kansas easily should be a win. And listen to this. Listen to their, their stats so far. They've played Wofford. They've played Buffalo. They've played Louisa Monroe. But Buffalo, hey, not not horrible. They stuck in it with, uh, who did that, they, didn't they play Georgia? Was it Georgia that they played? No, it was Ohio State that they played. And they, uh, hey, they they played Ohio State closer than people thought, 40-20. to 20. Ohio State had a pull away late, and they played a five-overtime game against Stony Brook and won, wow. And they beat a BCS, a BCS level team in Connecticut, uh, bad last week. So, hey, winning that game by as much as they did, that's... Impressive playing against Louisa Monroe, who was almost a top 25 team last season. They brought back half, most of that team from a season ago, beat them 70 to 7. That, that's insane. They have a quarterback that's already thrown for 1,000 yards in, on the season. They're first in passing yards, fifth in the rushing, rushing yards. The Shea Seastrunk already has six touchdowns and 417 yards. They're scoring through three games 69.7 points a game, and they're giving up only 7.7 points a game. That's second in the country in points four. is first in the country, obviously. 69.7 points a game, that's insane. But, uh, frick, that would be a tough game, but I, don't, I gotta hurry. <laughs> uh, I think Baylor wins. West Virginia's improved. I think this is a game that shows you how legit Baylor really is. Playing at night at home, uh, they're going to be a field stand. I think they win easily. Uh, it'll be tough. It'll be close at halftime, going into the third quarter, but Baylor wins 45 45-24 over West Virginia. Washington at Stanford. This is going to be an awesome game. I'm going to have to stay up late. Oh, if I'm home in time, gosh dang it. I hope I'm, I'm up. I'm. Okay, so I'm at Bryant Denny at 11 o'clock. Game gets out at 3. Probably get to our car at 4. Four-hour drive home. I should be back at 8. Home at 8.30. So maybe I'll get to catch some of that Northwestern game. That'd be awesome. But Washington at Stanford. Whew. Washington or Stanford. I think Stanford pays back uh, Washington for that upset win last season. Uh, Keith Hogan, I mean Kevin Hogan's played his that he wasn't starting then, and he's his first start against Washington, and he's playing at a high level, playing really well. They blew out Washington State last week. Defense really tough. Washington will keep it close, man. This will be a tough game. Washington can very easily pull the upset, but playing at home at night, Stanford should get the win. Close, close. Defense wins it. One turnover will make the difference. I will go Stanford. Stanford 27. Washington 24. Very close. And last game in this video, San Jose State, Hawaii. San Jose State, great quarterback. Hawaii, bad defense. Not a good combination for Hawaii. San Jose State 42. Hawaii 20. 
So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hope you have a great day. Roll tight. Go Sox and the Titans. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash S3RTR. If you agree with my picks or disagree with any, let me know in the comment section below. That's about it. Catch you guys next time. Peace.